<laughs> okay. That's okay, yeah? Now, it is the day when we are going to go through the most important models. That okay, yeah? That okay. start over again. Today we are going to deal with four very important models that we'll find in chapter 8. First, you're going to learn the Cournot game. And the Cournot game seems to be a quite silly game to start with. Because in the Kono game, the companies play over quantities. They play over quantities. And if you're out there doing business, you know that you always play over prices, not quantity. And in the textbook, they say nothing about the more complex two-phase game that you really play, a two-stage game that you really play in the Gono game. And I will just remind you from the very beginning that when you play the Gono game, you first play over capacity, then you play over prices, and if you reach the Nash equilibrium, <coughs> playing over capacity and simultaneously achieve Nash equilibrium playing over prices. The easy way to deal with that two stage game is to play over quantity. And it has been proved in many more advanced textbooks that to play the Kono game playing over quantity is exactly what you do in real life. First you play over capacity and all the leaders out there once they play over capacity they don't want to have access capacity. So they play over capacity making sure that they use all their capacity after they have played over prices. And that is exactly the more simple game to play over quantity. So the first game we are going to play is the Kono game, playing over quantity. And to the final exam, you will always have a Kono game. <coughs> Second, we are going to deal with <coughs> monopolistic competition to see the difference between a Kono game and monopolistic competition. But we come back to the more important model, monopolistic competition, later on. The third model you are going to deal with is the Stackelberg game. The question there is, is there a first mover advantage when you play the Kono game? Is it smart to move first? And if it's smart to move first, then strategically is the winner in the Kono game the first mover? And definitely we will prove, yes, 
So when you know that you play in a konoge, you know that it's smart to be a first mover. And the last model we are going to deal with is the patron game, where they play over prices. They have excess capacity, so each company can capture the entire market. And this is a model when they play over prices with homogeneous products, where they underbid each other. <laughs> and you are today going to learn <laughs> that in the Batron game, we have what we call a paradox. Even though there will be only two players, they underbid each other like in a price war, all the way down to the solution within perfect competition. Price equal to margin cost. So when you know you are in a, in a battle game, and we have homogeneous products, you don't really enjoy life <laughs> because you will have nothing left to cover fixed cost. Mm. While when you play the Kono game, the solution is somewhere in between perfect competition and monopoly. Okay? So this is the main understanding you are going to be left with after this lecture. But all the technique that I'm going to learn you today, you are going to learn for yourself to be very good at and be sure when you come to the final exam, you are able to deal with the solution to the Kono game, the solution to Steckelberg game and the solution to the Bertrand game. The textbook starts in a very simple way. There are two players. Now you can start. There are two players. One is called Airbus. The other is called Boeing, and they play over quantity. <coughs> and the intuitive approach here is to say that if Boeing is producing 45 units, the demand function is defined as P equal to 100 minus Q. And if Boeing is producing 45 units, we come up with the residual demand curve for Airbus, because what's left for Airbus is then Boeing is producing 45. The demand function, the residual demand function, starts at 55, and the demand function, P equal to 55 minus QA, is now the residual demand function left for Airbus. What will Airbus do? Airbus will maximize profit. That is to find the twice as steep curve, the marginal revenue curve, twice as steep, and <coughs> maximum profit is exactly where the marginal revenue curve intersects with marginal cost. That's 10. And then Airbus, as a player, will produce 22.5 <coughs> because they play over quantity 
and the price will be 32.5 million dollars then it is Boeing's turn to, turn to move what will Boeing do? since Airbus reduce 22.5 next picture the residual demand curve starts at 77.5 Boeing now <coughs> will move <coughs> along its residual demand curve and to maximize profit find the marginal revenue curve twice as steep and that intersects with the marginal cost where the new quantity in the second move is 33.75 <coughs> and the new price level 43.75 now <coughs> Airbus will respond because now it's not 45 that will be Boeing's production but 33.75 so next move for Airbus is to change the residual demand curve inwards now starting at 66.25 <coughs> and <coughs> to find the marginal revenue curve <coughs> it is intersect with the marginal cost curve where the level quantity is 28.125 the price level 38.125 and now <coughs> when <coughs> Boeing went blank <coughs> it is Boeing's turn to move what will Boeing do? it will move back and forth until they end up in what is equilibrium where the quantity is 30 the, pr <coughs> the price level is 40 now <coughs> none of the players will have any incentive to change if you play now then Airbus and Boeing will move and this is a stable equilibrium this is where they end with no incentives to change what, we, what did we call that? if they play if there are two players they play over quantity we have just now, <coughs> in a simple way, gone through that interaction. Move, counter, move, move, counter, move, move, counter. And we end up <coughs> in each of them producing 30, the price level being 40. And <coughs> we can already conclude, since they have no incentives to change, once they have reached this equilibrium that is where we have a Nash equilibrium so this is a Nash equilibrium in a game where they play the Konoge <coughs> and now to the more analytical part of this game theoretical part because from now on you are going to be familiar with the reaction function have you heard 
that concept before the reaction function and I'm going to teach over that many many times and you are definitely going to use the reaction function in the final exam what is meant for the reaction function next picture if we start <coughs> to <coughs> to um, maximize each company's profit and if we do exactly <coughs> the same exercise we started with we have P equal to 100 minus QA minus QB because Q is divided in QA and QB then we just establish the twice as deep root then we have P equal to 100 minus QA minus 2QB twice as deep. If you put that equal to 10, the marginal cost, we have maximized profit. And then we solve that, solu that equation analytically and we find that <coughs> QB is equal to 45 minus half QA and vice versa QA <coughs> equal to 45 minus half QB <coughs> <coughs> so a reaction function when they play over quantity is shown in this diagram where, Q, where Boeing <coughs> can choose quantity QB but Boeing <coughs> will always move along its own <coughs> reaction function so if Airbus will produce 90 how much will QB produce? zero and <coughs> if QA <coughs> produce zero how much will Boeing produce? 45 <coughs> just as a monopolist and <coughs> that function is Boeing's function and Boeing will always move along its own reaction function for whatever quantity Airbus will play Boeing will always respond to move along its reaction function why? because that's where Boeing will maximize its own profit and Boeing will always maximize profit and <coughs> We have the vice versa for Airbus. <coughs> Airbus <coughs> maximizing its own frogs on um, profit <coughs> will move along <coughs> its own reaction function. And if Boeing will play 90, how much will Airbus play? <coughs> Zero. <coughs> and if Boeing will will play 45 and zero how much will Airbus 45 45 and I say I repeat 45 if QB is zero Airbus move 
and long its own reaction function and that starts at 45. So you have two reaction functions since we have two players and they both move along their own reaction function and then finally there is one and only one intersection between these two reaction functions. And where is that? That is where we have Nash equilibrium. <coughs> and can you read from this figure? What is Nash equilibrium? 30-30. They play 30-30. And let's now see why this is a stable equilibrium. Let's now imagine that Airbus will play 40. What will Boeing do? Plays 25. And if Boeing plays 25, what will Airbus play? 40. Hmm? No, because Airbus always move along its own reaction function. So Airbus will play 32.5. And therefore you see that you just converge down to Nash equilibrium. Therefore it's a stable Nash equilibrium. And this is in a simultaneous game. And this is what's all about. If we change the model cost, that will be give you a shift in the reaction function. If we change the demand function, that will give you a shift in <coughs> the reaction functions. So the technique is to understand how to find the Nash equilibrium and that is always to find the residual demand function, to find the twi use the twice ST proof, put that equal to the margin cost and solve the equation where you put QB at the left hand side, QA at the right hand side, and you have Boeing's reaction function to maximize profit. And <coughs> it always, if we have a market campaign, and <coughs> We ask, will this market campaign be profitable? You have an investment. You have a change in the demand function. You, have a, you will have a new Nash equilibrium. And then the question in the final exam is always, is this market campaign profitable? If you invest in new technology, you play over logistics, as you will do. What will change if you play over logistics? Where you are going to be very good when you have finished your master courses here, that is to reduce the modern cost. You always fight for a more efficient production. Logistics is always about how to reduce your cost and if you then play over logistics you invest in a new logistical system you change the marginal cost what happens if you change the marginal cost you will have a shift in the reaction functions and then I ask you in the final exam is this profitable and if you have invested 10 billion 
within Boeing to, <coughs> to, to come up with a much more efficient logistical system producing airplanes. The question is to come up 10 million in a new logistical system, is it profitable? And the answer is always, how much does it change the modern cost? If it changes the modern cost, the only reason for it is to increase your profit. And then you will have to take the whole procedure from playing over logistics, going through changes in the reaction function, going through the new Nash equilibrium, and asking what was the change in profit. And then you can compare if this investment in a new logistical system was profitable or not. Hmm? So here's where we are going to play later on. <coughs> That's also to play over innovation. So this is the first model. Simple one, a very important one. And for the first time, you are familiar with the reaction function. And you are going to deal with that analytically. Next feature. <coughs> This is just to compare with monopoly. In a monopolistic solution, you will have 45 and price 55. And you see that in, <coughs> in proper, if you have perfect competition, the solution is 10 and 90. You definitely see that the Kono game is in between because the solution there was price 40, total production 60. So we are just in between. And when I say 60, 30 plus 30 is 60. The price level was 40. Here you see that the monopolist will end up 45, 55, and perfect competition, 10, 90. So we are just in the corner game, in between. Price level, 40, quantity, 60. So that's the kind of game <coughs> that is in between. Next picture. <coughs> now, <coughs> it is this simple analytical exercise when we ask ourselves, what is the solution when we don't only have one, two companies doable, but we have N number, big N. <coughs> different companies with the same technology, the same demand function, and they play the Kono game. <coughs> <coughs> then <coughs> we do exactly as we know. <coughs> we start with the modern revenue curve <coughs> for company J. That is equal to 100 minus <coughs> big N minus 1 QI. <coughs> Why come? <coughs> because all the other producers, they will just produce QI, <coughs> and there will be a number of N minus 1. So this is the residual modern revenue curve, <coughs> because it's minus 2 QI, <coughs> twice as steep. The same exercise, the residual demand curve, 
the modern revenue curve twice as steep. <coughs> and then <coughs> we put that equal to 10, modern cost. And we just look for the solution. <coughs> and we end up that QI, they all produce exactly the same quantity Y come because they have the same technology, they have the same modern cost, so they capture an equal share of the market, and <coughs> each of them will produce 90 over big N plus 1. QI equal to 90 over big N plus 1. That is a formula telling you that if you have six companies, you can just find exactly how much each of them will produce. That is 90 divided on 7. Because you have seven. If you have 10 companies, then each of them will produce 90 over 11. 11. N plus 1. 10 plus 1, 11. <coughs> then we are down to how much will they produce totally? <coughs> That's easy. Because each of them produce QI. And there are n companies. So total production is n over n plus 1 multiplied with 90. From this formula, can you see the bigger n are, the closer you are to perfect competition. Do you remember the solution the perfect competition? That was 90. And if n is very big, you are just producing the same quantity as in perfect competition. <coughs> so if you have a Conorgan and many players, 100 the solution is close to perfect competition. <coughs> what if n is 1? Then you have n 1 divided on 2. You have 90 divided on 2. What was that? And what was the solution in Monopoly? 45. <coughs> So, the Conorgan, with many companies, will end up in perfect competition. <coughs> the Conorgan, with only one player, will end up in perfect competition, in monopoly. And <coughs> if we have two, three, four, five, we are in between. <coughs> And the more companies, the closer to perfect competition. <coughs> huh? That's what you're going to learn <coughs> so far within <coughs> the Conorgan. Next picture. <coughs> now you have a table. And this is a table where <coughs> we end up in what's called the paradox of mergers. Because what's what I'm going to, to, uh, to show you now is that if you are five players, and if two of them try to merge, <coughs> and you play the Conorgan. The two companies that merge will lose. 
and those that just wait and play the Kuro game and be the winners. <coughs> you see number of films in the table to the left, one, two, three, four, five. And I use the formula as you just saw. You have the price, 55, 40, 32.5, 28 and 25. Just use the formula. Film output 45 for monoplast, 30 in a dual port, 22.5 if we are 3, 18 if we are 4, and 15 if we are 5. And then <coughs> we just calculate the profit, <coughs> and that's just price multiplied with quantity minus. Marginal cost equal to average cost multiplied with quantity. <coughs> then we have film's profit. It's 2025 when we have a proper monopolist. It's 900 if we are two. And it's all the way down to 225 for each company if the win be fine. <coughs> so the profit will fall from being alone to being five. <coughs> the prices will fall and the output will fall. And industry output will go up, will go up. And industry profit will go down. Let's now start with four companies. And you look at the line where you have four companies. And then company three and four decides to merge. Then you move one line up because now there are only three companies left. Each of the three companies will earn a profit of 506.25. That's the profit for each of them. How much did they earn totally before they merged? 325 plus 324 is 648. 648 is more than 506. So the two companies just sitting there waiting, they went from 324 up to Five zero six. One those merging went down from six forty eight to five zero six. So just to remind you, if you are in a Kono game, don't move first to merge. That's not a good strategy. <coughs> what I did not say is that if the two companies that merge will have much higher efficiency after merging, then you will have to take that into consideration and add to this Game. Because we now only looked at what happened in the marketplace. <coughs> if they don't achieve extra efficiency, then <coughs> this extra efficiency will have to compensate <coughs> for what you lose 
when you play in the Kono game. So the only reason to merge in the Kono game and move first, if you see that you have a very, very high <coughs> increase in cost efficiency by merging. That was the first part of lecture over the Kono game. It's a break. Uh, uh.